Hi, I'm Brent Russell, owner of Tarrant County Pest Control, and welcome to C4 of your apprentice training. So this is going to be, uh, well, we're in the third part. Let's see, the, the first part was federal and state laws that regulate the industry. And there was four parts to that, 30 minutes each. So that was your first two hours. That was section A. And then uh, section B was recognition of pest and pest damage. Uh, there was B1, B2, B3, and B4, 30 minutes each. And so that was your second hour that's required for your uh, apprentice training to take your technician to take the test to get your technician license. And now we're into the C, um, which is pesticide labels and label comprehension. Now we've already done C1, C2, and C3, and this is C4 of pesticide labels and label comprehension. And after you've done this, you will have completed um, your first six hours of the 20 hours of apprentice training. So you need a total of 20 hours. There's 10 categories. Uh, we just talked about the first three, and we're about to finish the third category. The next one is going to be, uh, D is going to be pesticide safety. And after that is environmental protection. And then application equipment and techniques, um, followed by pesticide formulations and actions. Uh, and it goes on, and then there, there, there's a few more. So altogether, um, there's 10 categories. You're just about to finish your third category, which will complete six hours. And then after you've done all of these categories, uh, and you, you'll you be able to run light uh, pest control jobs on your own without having to be with a certified applicator. So with that being said, uh, let's get started on C4, read the label. Before you buy a pesticide, make sure that you read the label to determine things like, is it the pesticide that you need for this job? Or can you safely use the pesticide under the application conditions? Where can you use the pesticide? You need to keep in mind things like pets, vegetable gardens, lawns, ornamental plants, structures, things like that. Also, are there any restrictions on the use of the pesticide? And how much product do you need to use? These are all common questions that we need to look at on the label before we buy a pesticide. Before you mix a pesticide, you should always read the label to determine things like what type of protective equipment you should use, with what can the pesticide be mixed, how much pesticide should you use, and what is the mixing procedure. All of these things can be found by reading the label. Be sure before you mix a pesticide that you read the label. Before you apply the pesticide, make sure that you read the label to determine things like what safety measures should you follow or when may you apply the pesticides. You for instance, you can't always apply a pesticide if it's raining. Or how about, what are the re-entry intervals for people and pets? Make sure that you read the label to understand when people can re-enter after you've treated. And how should you apply the pesticide before you apply the pesticide, make sure that you read the label. 
before you store or dispose of a pesticide or its container. Read the label to determine things like where and how should you store the pesticide or how do you decontaminate and dispose of a pesticide container. In the state of Texas, they require you to triple rinse and puncture containers when you are done with them. Okay, let's talk about the steps to properly dispose of and how to triple rinse a pesticide container. First of all, you want to be sure that you wear all of the required PPE, like glasses and gloves. Then, after you've emptied the container, you want to fill it about a quarter to a third of the way with some water, and then put the cap back on it and shake it. Then you can pour that back into the tank for the job. Now, repeat that process two more times. That's take the cap off, put some water in it, shake it up, pour it back into the container or your spray rig, whatever that may be. And um, then, after you've done that, you must puncture the container. So, you can use a knife if you've got one. Uh, it doesn't matter to be a big knife or a little knife, depends on how thick the container is. Or if you don't have a knife with you, um, many times I just take a screwdriver. I always have a screwdriver on the truck, and you can puncture that container with the screwdriver. So basically, you want to thoroughly rinse this container out three times, puncture it, and then dispose of it in a container where they're going to take it to an EPA-approved landfill. Okay, now let's take a look at some pesticide labels. Uh, it's very important that you understand how to look around and find the information that you actually need on these labels. So we're going to actually take a look at some labels. And one thing that I want you to see is how easy it is to find these labels. If you don't have a label, say uh, that you know that you're going to be using Talstar on a job uh, and you don't have the label with you and you want to read about it, which is a good idea that any time that I'm going to use a new product, I'll spend a day or two or, or more just studying and reading the label to make sure I understand it. And so um, if you don't have the product with you, if you haven't already bought it, then you don't have access to the label that's on the container. So I'm going to show you now how easy it is to, um, to find these labels and to download them uh, on the Internet. So let me see here. Let me just move this over. And we're going to go to the Internet. And let's say here we're going to type in Talstar P label and see what comes up. And right there is your Talstar P label. First, just the first thing that pops up right here is a do-it-yourself pest control website. And you, you could go on there and just scroll down until you find the label, which is right here, Telstar P label. Click on that, and there, there's the label. That, that's one way to do it. Um, you can also, if you look, you might find, like right here, Telstar P, where it says FMC Pro Solutions.com. FMC is the company that makes Telstar. So here's the Telstar label in, in a PDF file. And if you open that up, this is from the factory. And I always like to try to find these extensions if I can because you know that it's, that it's up to date and it's going to be some good information. So here, so we're going to look at this one. This is Telstar P, Professional Insecticide. And let's uh, ask ourselves a question. Like the first thing you want to know is what type of pest can you treat with Telstar P? Well, you got to ask yourself, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, 
where am I going to be treating? Am I treating inside, outside? Am, am I treating a house? Am I treating a business? Uh, is this um, going to be treated in a, a greenhouse? Um, or is it uh, at horse stables or, or wherever? It, you just need to know that where you're applying and what kind of pest uh, that you can treat. So let's say that we're going to do a general pest treatment inside a house and we want to know so let's take a look and we're going to scroll down we want to know what kind of bugs can this treat inside a house and you're going to see that this Telstar label is 12 pages long it goes on and on there it talks about storage and disposal uh, there's it talks about ants you can see it controls ants mosquitoes and here we go indoor use so let's take a look at this. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right. Indoor use for the control of ants, carpenter ants, bed bugs, bees, beetles, biting flies, box elder bugs, centipedes, cicadas, cockroaches, crickets, earwigs, and it goes on and on and on, and roaches. And so you can look through here and see. If you have a customer that calls you up and they say, well, we've got uh, wasps that are flying around the house. you got them in the house. That's right here. Can you treat inside the house, though, for wasp? Right there it is. Wasp. Yes, you can. What if they have ants? Yes, you can. It's right there. Okay. So, box elder bugs is something you usually find outside on the trees, but they wander into the house. So, you can treat the house inside and out for box elder bugs. So that brings up a good point. Now, what if you're doing a treatment, um, say, on the lawn, right? So we're going to scroll through here, and, and if we've got to treat their yard, we're going to look there. It talks about termites. You can treat termites with this product. We're going to keep going and keep looking. Page 8. There's page 9. Page 10 talks about termite control. And then finally, right here on page 10 is lawn. So let's zoom into that. And let's take a look here. All right. So now if you're going to apply this pesticide to a lawn, it's there. it talks about, first of all, that it says that Apply Telstar P professional insecticide as a broadcast treatment. What is a broadcast treatment? Broadcast treatment means you're spraying the whole yard. A perimeter treatment is you're just spraying around the house, maybe eight, six to eight feet, depending on what the label says, how far you do on a perimeter treatment. So uh, it would this in this case it's saying if you treat a yard, you can use, so you now you know you can do a broadcast treatment with Telstar. And it says to use application volumes of up to 10 gallons per thousand square feet to get uniform coverage when treating dense grass foliage. All right, so it gives you some some volumes and how much. And there's there's charts also that you can look at at the mixing rate. We've talked about that about mixing. But what we want to know is what kind of pest can we treat on the lawns. So right here is going to be a list. Of pests and it's going to also give you the application rates that you can treat those pests so I find this interesting that for in, for instance here is centipedes and crickets and earwigs okay these are really really common that we see in Texas around houses now look at this mix rate okay the application rate for Telstar P professional insecticide is 0.025 to 0.05 percent for centipedes, crickets, earwigs, right? But now look down here for ants at the bottom, down here at the bottom left corner. It says ants, all right? You're going to mix this at 0.05 percent to, uh, or uh, 0.05, or they're saying a half to one fluid ounce per thousand square feet. All right, so up here, you're mixing a quarter to a half ounce per thousand square feet. All right? 
So you've got different application rates for different bugs. Now this application rate, when they are saying that, so a, you want to get out, say, a, a half an ounce, a quarter to half an ounce per thousand square feet. So if you're spraying a thousand square feet and it doesn't really matter how much water that you're using with that, if you use 20 gallons or if you use 30 gallons, it doesn't matter if you put a half of an ounce in 20 gallons and you spray that out on a thousand feet, or if you put a half of an ounce into 30 gallons and you spray that out over a thousand feet. It doesn't matter if you put a half of an ounce in one gallon and if you could get that liquid to spread out to a thousand feet, then that's fine. It, because what happens is it's not about how much water is in it, it's about how much product that you're putting in there. Because here's what happens. If you put a half of an ounce in one gallon and you spray that in a thousand foot area, when that water dries and evaporates, it leaves behind a half of an ounce of residue. If you put a half of an ounce into 10 gallons and you spray a thousand square feet, when that area dries, it's going to still leave back behind a, the same half of an ounce of product or pesticide that you put in that water. So it's the residuals, how much chemical is left after it dries per thousand square feet that's, that's important. So what you have to take into consideration then is how many gallons is it going to take to spray this evenly where, I, where number one, I have enough that I can get an even coverage, and number two, I don't have too much that it ends up pooling up or running off. Remember that one of the things you don't want to have is runoff, especially to getting in, in any kind of groundwater. So you take those into consideration. Telstar has a very broad label. It allows you to take um, this half an ounce and put it in, and spread it out over a thousand square feet. And then and you can decide how much water that that takes. Okay, the next question is, uh, what is the active ingredient in Talstar P? Okay, so let's take a look at the label. And, the, and on the very front of the label, this is one of the easiest things to find, is your active ingredient right here. Let's zoom in on this. Okay. So it says here that the active ingredient is bifenthrin. Okay. Now, there are several products that have the bifenthrin in them that you can buy. Um, one of them, I believe, is called Crosscheck. Um, there's another one I think it's called Masterline um, or Talstar. So all of these um, carry the same active ingredient by Finthrin. Okay, so <clears throat> Talstar is the brand name, but the active ingredient, if you understand um, that the other products have the same active ingredient, you might be able to find a comparable product for less money that will do the same thing. Okay, uh, so another question that you might want to have, <clears throat> let's, let's look on this uh, pesticide label and see if we can figure out uh, what this product does to fish. Okay, so if we're scrolling down through here and we see environmental hazards right here. Well, under environmental hazards, okay, it says that this pesticide is extremely toxic to fish and aquatic vertebrates. Okay, so that's just one thing, and you, you can, as you read through these labels, you're going to learn a lot of other things. But what is so important about that is it's not unusual at all. It, houses that you treat that they have these little koi ponds that have goldfish in them and so you want to be very careful not just around koi ponds but also if you're inside a house and you're using Talstar uh, doing a general pest treatment 
and there's a, a fish aquarium in the house, sometimes people can have fish that are worth thousands of dollars. So, and especially in those koi ponds, uh, some of those just one uh, big koi could cost ten thousand dollars. So, you got to be very careful <laughs> around fish. Fish are highly susceptible to pesticides, and it and this one it says it on the label. It's one of the first things that it lists under environmental hazards. So, um, that's something that you learn just by reading through these labels. Um, <clears throat> and another question that you might have is about can you broadcast this treatment inside uh, a house if you're doing a house can you do a broadcast treatment now we talked about that the label says that you can do a broadcast treatment outside on a yard but over here to the right if you look in it where it says directions for use and we'll zoom in on that and it says it is a violation of federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with the labeling. Do not apply a broadcast application to the interior surfaces of homes. Okay, so you cannot do a broadcast treatment uh, with Telstar on the inside of a house. This is important to know because sometimes if you're doing a treatment uh, for fleas or bed bugs or uh, just depending on what you're treating, you might need to do a broadcast treatment uh, to get control of that. So it's very important that you read these labels and understand some of the things that you carry with you allow that and some of them do not allow it. So make sure that you uh, identify the pest, uh, that you mix it at the right rate, and um, that you're allowed to or, or not allowed to you know, broadcast a lot of these chemicals on the inside that only allows for spot treating and crack and crevice treatment. So make sure you understand your labels and uh, it'll help you to get a better treatment, better results, and be much safer for the environment and the people and the pets uh, that are around you. Um, we want to take care of this ecosystem. <clears throat> We're pest control operators. We are not total pest eliminators. We do not want to eliminate every single pest in this world. That uh, would be not a good thing. So uh, what we're trying to do is control pests, especially inside of people's homes and their businesses or where they do agricultural damage um, or any kind of a damage that's going to cost people money, um, then, then you got to get rid of these pests or control them anyways. And so make sure you le read these labels and that we do it safely, that we, you don't get any runoff, that you're not destroying uh, water tables, or um, that you don't have drift going into other people's areas and destroying anything from bees. Or maybe just somebody doesn't want to have any pesticide uh, in their yard or their area, so you have to be very considerate about those things. So read the labels. Uh, try to understand them. If you don't ha understand them, call me, text me. Uh, get a hold of a, a certified applicator that you're working under um, or get a hold of the, the place where you buy your pesticides. Those guys are usually very knowledgeable about the products that they sell. Okay, now let's take a quick look at some other labels. Here's Termidor SC. You can look real quickly at this label and you can see the active ingredient right here is Fipronel. Now, Fipronel is another one of those products that has been out long enough that there's some other companies that make um, some pesticides with Fipronel in it. So you might be able to find that cheaper somewhere else. Um, but you got to just try them out and make sure that they work as well as the other, um, as the other, the main product does. So uh, something else on here you can see this uh, comes with a caution. Okay. So that tells you that it's slightly toxic. Let's take a look at another one. All right. Now here's transport. Transport is also a product that will um, it has what's known as a transfer effect. It'll transfer from one, uh, you know, ant to another or, or whatever insect that crawls through it. So um, if you look on here, 
here's your first aid statement, your hotline number, right down here on the right. This also comes, if you look at the bottom left, caution. And there's your statement you're going to see, keep out of reach of children. That's always there. <clears throat> and then right here, we'll zoom in on this. Here's your active ingredient. Acta Myprid, okay? By Finthrin. Okay? By Finthrin. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? From Talstar. So, <clears throat> that's got a couple products in it. This is made by FMC. Okay, let's take a look at Delta Dust. Right away you can see there's your caution word, caution, keep out of reach of children. Here, uh, Bear is the one who makes that. If you look at the top, we're here, let's zoom in a little bit, it says Delta Dust. It tells you right up, real quick, what it does. It provides a quick control of ants, bees, cockroaches, fleas, silverfish. So there, it tells you real quick what it, what it uh, kills and what it does. Um, so just by looking at the, these are just the front, the front of the label. Here's suspend SC caution. Uh, here, here, right in the middle is your um, active ingredient. So you're going to see that on all of these labels. You can see very consistently. You'll always see those um, that information on the front of all of, of these labels. Okay, now for some study questions. The first one is this: true or false? The words keep out of reach of children must appear on all pesticide labels. The answer is true. Next question, true or false? If a pesticide label has no instructions about protective equipment, that means you need no protective equipment while using the pesticide. True or false? The answer is false. Third question, true or false, even if your intended use is not listed on a pesticide label, it is legal to use the pesticide anyway when you are sure it will work. True or false, the answer is false. Question four, although the EPA registers pesticide labels, it does not require manufacturers to submit labels for registration. True or false? The answer is false. Question number five. Fill in the missing word. Highly toxic products must carry the signal word blank. The answer is highly toxic products must carry the signal word Danger. Fill in the missing word. Products with the signal word danger may also have a skull and crossbones symbol and the word blank written in red. The answer is poison. That's right. Products that have a signal word danger may also have a skull and crossbone symbol and the word poison written in red. Fill in the missing word. The signal word blank is required on labels for moderately toxic products. The answer is the signal word warning is required on labels for moderately toxic products. Fill in the missing word. All labels for slightly toxic pesticides must carry the signal word blank. The answer is all labels for slightly toxic products must carry the signal word caution.